All right, um, let's go ahead and get started. Great to be here with the community. Uh, I, I love doing webinars. Um, I feel like it's an opportunity, opportunity to connect with people just all over the world without having to travel anywhere. Um, not that I don't like to travel everywhere, but uh, it's, it's fantastic to be able to allow people to be in their seats from wherever they are and uh, join us for, for really critical topics. And uh, the topic for day, today, I feel like, is extremely relevant. I think there's a lot of people who are in the situation where they're just stuck. They, they don't know what to do. They've been paralyzed with this InfoPath situation. You know, they may have looked at Power Apps in the past and it just didn't do what they were looking for. Or maybe people have, are kind of in the split mode where they've gone on to do Office 365 things and, and yet they've got this legacy environment that they just really don't know what to do with. Um, and I'm hoping that the conversation today will really be able to dig into these these six challenges that are that are essentially paralyzing people in their migration to to the cloud or to Office 365 or to even on-prem uh, more recent uh, versions and just worried about hey how do we get rid of our our InfoPath legacy how do we actually get out of we know it's end of life we know it's dead what are we going to do and I think that this this session where I'll be talking about these things. Um, our sponsor today is Crow Canyon. They have a fantastic tool uh, that they've built to help people with their transition as well. And I uh, appreciate having Scott on who will be talking about that today. So digging right in, um, what we're gonna first do is start off with a poll. And uh, if you could actually launch that, um, Scott, that'd be great. But the question we have, uh, and this will be coming up any moment, um, is what version of SharePoint are you using? And uh, I, I think this is an interesting one because there, there really are people all over the map. And uh, as these come in, I am going to ask you, uh, Scott, to um, be able to speak to what, what the options are and also um, help us understand when the, when the poll is complete. Okay, yes, the poll is running currently and we're getting replies to it. Uh, we have about 75% people voted. The results are showing a lot on 2016, 2013, about half, and another third on SharePoint Online, leaving the rest on 2010, 2017, and I mean 20, 2007, sorry, 2010 and 2007, or other. Uh, it doesn't seem like anybody's replied they're on 2019 at this point. Interesting. But I think that's, that's, that's probably quite telling, too, that those who are using InfoPath probably decided not to use it on 2019. <laughs> that that <laughs> yeah, kind of makes right. sense. That's true, yeah. So we got about one-third, actually 33% exactly, on SharePoint Online and 44% 2016-2013, and then uh, the rest on 2010, 2007, or other. So hybrid, hybrid is also included in there. Yeah, well. yeah, I can imagine a lot of hybrid. Okay. So yeah, I'll and close. actually the fact that we've yeah the fact okay. that we've got a bunch of people O O three sixty five even though InfoPath is there I can imagine there's a number of hybrid environments yeah for sure all right um so one of the things that we started this um this plan to do the webinar is we we built this infographic and the infographic really was to help illustrate what are these reasons what are these legacy features that are holding people back and we came up with six kind of key things one of them was the print ready forms you know people really appreciate being able to print um the xml files that uh, you know you're, you're storing your info path uh, answers in these xml libraries um and also people who were doing more obviously with classic but they were doing custom HTML or JavaScript forms, um, some with, you know, with um, kind of code behind with the info path, with SharePoint, kind of mix of SharePoint designer type stuff, um, building these complex forms. And then also, um, 
a lot of people had built uh, external access into their extranet type of solutions or something of some things that they were really looking for. And I think a lot of people have, have um, you know, forms is something that you can use outside, but InfoPath and forms really aren't parallel from that perspective. Um, it doesn't doesn't give you all the capabilities that, that Power Apps has or that InfoPath has, uh, and Power Apps. Uh, for the most part, up to this point, has has not been anonymous or external sharing for those forms that, that you could build with Power Apps. Um, and then there was the the client. You know, a lot of people they would use that off that that client to, to either fill out forms offline or to actually do their editing. Um, and so people have been really curious about that story as well. Of Tell me about the client. You know, does, what can I do with the client? And the Power App story, for the most part, you know, they started off having this editor, but now it's all moved to the web. So there's a real question around offline and what those kind of capabilities are. Um, so essentially, this agenda for today is to really go through these six things and to help you understand kind of what's going on in this world of these particular challenges. I want to go deep. We're going we're gonna to dive deep here, but the idea is to really loosen these rocks so that, you know, your ability to move off of InfoPath, your ability to make some decisions around where you want to go, whether it's Power Apps or third-party tools or, you know, DIY, build something custom. I really want to be able to help you be able to, to, to help you get off this. And, you know, for many years, Microsoft's been kind of saying this idea of, Hey, Power Apps doesn't seek feature parity with InfoPath, but really my story is, well, these are the issues that I've seen and, and that I, I really feel like these are the ones that are, that resonate. I've, I've actually done a lot of polling and, um, hitting up a lot of experts and saying, Hey, what do you feel like are the things that are holding people up? And this is the list we came up with. Um, you know, if you want in the Q and A, um, you could definitely stick in some things you feel like that might be missing from this list. But from what I found, this is, this is a pretty good, I'm not saying it's fully comprehensive, but it's a pretty good list of the things that are holding people up. And yes, it's true. InfoPath is dead. In fact, we had a big funeral way back. I think that was 2013 SharePoint conference. Um, and, uh, you know, in fact, InfoPath itself has been, ultimately uh, has not even improved. Um, you know, the, the last InfoPath client was 2010, and <laughs> there weren't a lot of even new features between 2007 and 2010. So it's, it's really been kind of dragging along. It was, it was pretty amazing when it first came out and for the first few years, and there really wasn't any other answers for the longest time. So there's just a lot built on InfoPath, and I understand People have used it as this application builder to build all sorts of things. And Microsoft can continue to push that data out. But unfortunately, what I find is it just allows those people who are stuck just even more time to just kind of stew, um, where it doesn't matter whether it's 2024 or 2026, you know, uh, the, the, the date is still kind of arbitrary because the technology hasn't improved. Um, from an InfoPath perspective, where Microsoft has really been spending its time is with Power Apps and Flow. Um, but again, it doesn't seek feature parity, and a lot really just don't know how to proceed. Well, a lot of what I'm going to be covering today is really how stuff in Office 365, primarily Flow and Power Apps, and really a lot just Power Apps, really starts to address those things that you have concerns about and why you're, you're paralyzed today. Um, so basically the agenda is to take each of these six things and then we're gonna dive in. So the first thing, print. So what's going on with print? Well, print, I would say there's a number of actually different messages. So the first thing is if you're trying to say, I wanna be able to print my form, you know, I've, I've seen some users say, Oh, well, I just have an output to email and then I can print my email. It's like, okay, well, that's, <laughs> that's a solution. So there's kind of this DIY of you can build it for yourself, 
print it from the browser or, you know, that those kind of capabilities of, you know, you can print you know, export to a PDF and then print that PDF as an example or export to Excel and then do your sizing and, and so on inside of Excel. Um, the where, where, where I would say the innovation is coming and where Microsoft's spending their time is actually with the idea that Power BI is the reporting engine of Power Apps. Um, and in fact, there was a Biz Apps session on Roadmap where they actually talked about this. And in it, they basically talked about this pagination report capability in Power BI, where they basically the idea is to integrate your app or form with Power BI. And the strategy here is to become more integrated with Power BI to allow it to be a common report generation story. Okay, so um, it, the idea here is not necessarily to be add a bunch of reporting capabilities to Power Apps. It's actually to marry those two up a little bit more to Power Apps and Power BI. Um, and uh, and I I just want to give a shout out to any um, Power Addicts that are actually on this uh, on this webinar. Uh, we appreciate the work that the Power Addicts community is doing. In fact, I would say if you're if you're looking if you're if you're looking for help in Power in the Power platform, you definitely need to to, to seek out these Power Addicts. There's a hashtag Power Addicts. Um, you'll see it on YouTube. In fact, a lot of these people are really big on YouTube. Not saying they're crazy popular, but big in terms of they're actually instead of doing blogs now, they're actually doing a lot of videos. And so um, guys like Shane Young, um, who are doing videos where they're basically sharing their knowledge freely in, um, in, in basically these YouTube channels. And I, I would say, yeah, search, go tr tra track down Power Addicts. Um, really cool stuff. Um, yeah, and I, I was basically saying this, this, there's a really key session here. If you really care about this one, go track down at the Business Application Summit that happened earlier this year. It was actually the same week as SPC, if that's where you were, uh, where they actually reinforced the path of the Power BI reporting services, this, this, this path here. And I can't speak, you know, I'm under NDA, I can't really speak to any details, but um, that if you can track down that session, you can kind of see where things have gone. Um, if you're looking for capabilities today, there are these report generation capabilities where if you're using Canvas apps, you can use SQL to leverage SQL Server reporting services. Um, so basically using that common data service, the CDS, uh, where you can use the CDS reporting capabilities to them backed by SSRS. And this is also an area where Microsoft has basically said they're gonna continue to invest here. There's, this is another roadmap investment area of improving the report capabilities. Obviously, if you're pushing data into SQL, um, with SQL as the back end of your of your form, um, then uh, that's 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 one way of being able to get really nice print ready forms or print ready um, data layouts. And um, you know, SSRS has a lot of really cool stuff, as does Power BI um, in terms of reporting capabilities. And then you know, if you're looking for for fixed layout documents, more of a power user style. Um, looking at things like um, outputting to PDF or Word or Excel, um, and those those are some things I would think were, are more of the um, easy answers rather than SSRS. <laughs> Power BI actually I think is pretty cool. I think um, I, I see that as being a really good answer too. So now let's dive into the XML. Now, what's interesting about XML? Is if you've, if you if you've been using InfoPath for many many years, you may be saying I've got thousands or hundreds of thousands of uh, files now that have XML in them, and you're wondering, well, how can I, you know, if I migrate all that data over, how am I going to continue to read this data? Um, and one one interesting thing is here, there's a in the tech community, there's a um, on, in the forum, basically somebody asked the question about, hey, is there a way for me to work with XML, um, working with my XML data? And the answer was actually Flow itself does have the ability to parse XML. 
So this idea of a possible workaround is to use the XML data to parse through uh, and then convert it into another data source. Then you can push it to, you know, have Power Apps be your front end. Uh, that may sound kind of complicated, but you can imagine um, using Flow to basically process your, your data. And the, the other option is use a Canvas app, export it to PDF. Um, and again, that kind of goes along with that idea of there's more reporting capabilities coming next year. Uh, again, something I can't really speak to, but um, the, the investments we, we talked about from the, the BizApp Summit um, in relation to, you know, more print capabilities, more, um, you know, this idea of exporting that data that today is in XML, wouldn't it be great if we could get all that data into PDFs and then move on, you know, basically cut over to our new forms. Um, and same kind of answer with Excel, you know, your ability to then connect and write the data out to, to XML using some kind of connector. Uh, and there are connector support where you can use your Power Apps to connect to PDF or to Excel. Um, so hopefully that gets us out of the situation where it's like, oh, I've got all these XML files, Power Apps isn't helping me. Well, there there are ways of being able to transform the data. Um, and, you know, it sounds like a little bit of DIY, meaning do it yourself, you know, building tools to do these things. But there are also um, third parties who, who've invested in this kind of space. All right, let's jump into the UI. Um, so one of the things to understand um, with InfoPath, a lot of people would they would build out the forms the way that they wanted to, and uh, they would you know, add images and add arrows and buttons and all sorts of interesting things. Um, now I would say these days with Power Apps, there's these Canvas apps that give you quite a bit of power based on being able to start with say a, a blank canvas um, and then being able to add some, and there's there's some levels of extensibility and I, I, I feel like um, this area of, hey, I wanna do what I wanna do, a little bit feels like, especially the SharePoint people in the world who spent a little bit of time in O365 or have been looking at 2019, this kind of classic versus modern. I kind of feel like the same kind of feel here a little bit of, hey, I used to do stuff in InfoPath and I had all this flexibility of being able to choose how I wanted to lay it out and how I would you know, use the things I would add and being able to add what I wanted to add. Um, now it feels a lot more like the modern UI in terms of how you're building it out and, and what that, that kind of explain that, that feels like. Um, I would highly recommend um, you know, go, going and checking this out. Um, this basically is, a, is one of the Microsoft documents that talks about transforming your info path um, using Canvas apps. Um, but it's also something I, I do want to kind of dive in a little bit more. Um, those of you who may have built a bunch of really cool uh, JavaScript or using uh, Angular or um, Handlebars or any of the, the JavaScript libraries, that you're then trying to like integrate into your UI. This is this is one of the frustrations people feel like, hey, I used to be able to have all sorts of power uh, with my classic kind of experiences. You do need to rethink that now in this modern experience where where your power is is a different kind of power. In Power BI, like I said, there's these power addicts. They, as a community, have really been able to share best practices with each other to be able to build stuff that's really quite amazing where you've got apps that call other apps and uh, you've got all these really cool connectors with flow um, and i think the best way to kind of show you some of the power here um, and uh, you know when we start talking about microsoft's investment in this space they've really really been investing a lot um, in not just one thing but in these four major areas. There's these model-driven apps, the common data service, which also is similar to the Dynamics. Well, it's basically the, the one that Dynamics uses, Dynamics 365. 
there's these portals, which we'll be talking about a little bit later, um, that bring a lot of capabilities. And uh, there's even an AI builder that's also in preview um, that adds a bunch of capabilities. So I think the best way to illustrate this is actually to jump into this new UI. Um, but let me just read, read this, this paragraph for you. Now you can easily customize any SharePoint list form in Power Apps. You can access the properties for SharePoint integration control. Um, and the SharePoint integration control communicates user actions between SharePoint and Power Apps. So the thing to understand here is your ability to have more of this control and so your ability to take an existing uh, list or your ability to communicate between SharePoint list forms. There's, there's a lot more that um, has been happening behind the scenes. Um, I'm going to just pull up. Um, here's our uh, Power App Studio. Um, all you got to do is like um, it's web.powerapps.com. I've uh, it, it basically you're you're logged into the tenant, and here's my here's my uh, experience. Uh, in fact, I had just gone down here and clicked create. I can go back to home so you can kind of see what this experience is like. You've got your, your apps that you've created or that actually the organization has created. Here's some that have been shared with me and so on. So it feels like this feel is definitely kind of an Office 365 kind of feel to it. But you can see here's, we can do Canvas apps from blank where we're just blank slate, right? Um, Model-driven app from blank. Model-driven apps are usually Primarily, um, the uh, I would say most of your typical ones in SharePoint are model-driven apps. And then you've got your portal from Blank. Portals are in preview. Um, and we'll actually, I want you to see some of these different design services. And, uh, and then this idea of, hey, let's actually start with the data. And you can actually see they've got a few things around here, like your SQL data, your SharePoint data, or your data in an Excel file or various Office 365, or SurveyMonkey, or Dropbox, 200 plus other types of uh, apps. If you haven't spent any time in here, highly recommend it. Um, in fact, you should go take a Power Apps class. Um, at the Microsoft offices, there's, there's always something going on. Um, and uh, you, know, it, you may feel like, hey, there's not one in my area. Go track down. Um, either Shane Young's blog or one of these power apps like uh, Louise um, from the UK, she has an amazing um, set of videos where you can go and just just soak it up, just, just learn a bunch um, around power apps. Um, and, and you can see there's, there's more and more of these templates where it's like, I wanna just get started. I wanna do a budget tracker or a service desk type of app or a fundraiser and you can actually see and what I would encourage you to do is, you know, use one of these templates and then you can actually dig in and see what they've done. Um, and the, the more you look at these, you can say, actually, there is a little bit more customization than I thought I could do. Um, you know, here's an interview tool or an out of office tool, cost estimator tool, book a room. And I can see there's a bunch of these. And actually what's interesting as well, there's actually a community where they've actually shared the solutions they've built. Uh, I was just talking to a guy this this week who said um, somebody built a, a power app um, for their SharePoint Saturday where um, they they basically created this power app where the, it would track the attendees going um, and the different sessions they go to that would build a raffle that had a, uh, an enumerator on it. Um, and, he, and he basically built this power app and then shared it to the community so anybody else can download it and use it in their environment. So the ability to ex import and export is there as well. Um, so you can see here's a bunch of solutions. Let's go back to um, the create. So you can see there's all, or you can see just office one. Let's just go, um, let's start with just a blank one just so you can see kind of what this, this surface is. Now, the first thing you notice here is it asks me tablet or phone. When Power Apps was built, it was definitely focused on mobile in a huge way. Um, 
I'm just going to create a test one just so you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. Um, and as we choose phone, you, you would notice that actually what's great about the phone one is you can create these little apps um, that actually can be deployed even to the phone. Um, so if you're looking for that client experience, you have that ability. Get the environment ready. Here we're pull it's opening up the studio. And now you can see basically we've got this browser based um, Power App Studio experience where I can create a form or a gallery. Gallery being able to like, you know, display things, whether it's files or images or that kind of thing. Uh, we can even walk through this interactive tour, which I would highly recommend. Um, uh, but then basically here we are in in our studio in the browser and the, and what's interesting is this 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 started out being um, less rich than the than the client and then it actually got better performance and it's actually richer now than the client apps they basically deprecated the the Power App Studio um, client a while back so you can see here our ability to uh, do galleries. Um, displaying data or pulling in data in a data table, um, our media galleries so we can pull in images and <clears throat> barcodes and audio and so on, charts and graphs, icons. And, uh, you know, what's, what's really cool is when you start talking about one of Microsoft's major investments, which is this, these capabilities around doing AI. Um, I don't know if you guys saw the Inspire uh, demo last day with Satya. Uh, I think it was toward the end of his keynote. There was uh, a guy who actually had Pepsi bottles and they used, the guy created a power app to take a photo that would then, the photo would go into SharePoint and then the power app would, um, it would use a flow to then use um, the AI to recognize and scan and see how many bottles were actually on the shelf. Super, super cool. Showed the power of the end user being able to create power apps. Um, really, really cool stuff. Um, I want to go back to um, let me just go back. Um, all right. So there's this these portals as well. The portals are in preview. And the reason I want to bring up portals is this idea that, um, and you can see I don't have permission, so I can't really go too deep here. But I want to I want to speak to what the portals are. These portals allow you to connect to data, and they have, and it's kind of jumping ahead a little bit, but it allows you to share data with external and internal users. Um, so you, you, those of you who've been waiting for your ability to create apps for external users. Um, Fantastic. Those come with with the portal capabilities. Um, let me jump back here. But uh, yeah, definitely those of you who are, you know, you've been dissatisfied with with Power Apps. I would say it's it's probably time to go back in there. There's a lot more that they've added in terms of capability. There's actually a really rich community now that's around it. It's your ability to get a lot of answers. Um, that community has really, really been forming, and there's there's a lot of help now where you can kind of get tutored on your ability to start creating cool stuff. Um, on the AI side of it, you can use vision, you can use prediction, you can use language. Um, so being able to do kind of machine learning or machine teaching, these kinds of capabilities are coming to the platform. Right now it's in a preview. Um, but uh, it's basically point and click um, to be able to, to integrate Power Apps and Flow to, to basically analyze and say, hey, is this a dog? Like you could create that right now, like the object detection stuff. Really super cool. Um, not saying that's what you've built already in InfoPath, but when you start understanding this is why Microsoft's investing here in this space, it comes full circle why it's like they want you to think differently about your data and about how you're collecting data 
and how you can automate that data with flow or, or, you know, being able to, now that you've got your data where you want it, being able to use the AI to, um, or machine learning essentially to, to be able to automate processes and, and gain insights on that data. Um, so these portals, your ability to, um, and this is pre-release basically, but the idea is you can create portals, you can create security roles, um, where you can assign different roles for external users. In fact, you can cr basically create a portal where people can sign up um, to your ability to essentially do anonymous from a perspective of a user can then register um, to get an account where they can then get access to data that you want to be able to, to share with them. Um, so the, the portals really is that, that ability to, to share the data. And uh, on the left, you can kind of see an example of that. It looks a lot like a cool website where you're going to display your data, um, can have kind of a login experience where people can sign up uh, and get, get invited to use um, these portals. Um, now, I'm sure this introduces a bunch of questions around licensing. And I'll, I, do, I did create a section at the very end to talk about licensing. Um, in fact, I actually did throw one piece in here. Um, this ability to, um, your, your portals, they provide a, an ability to create new, um, there's, there's, um, authenticated where you can choose, um, so many logins per month and you can see that, that at $200 per authenticated user. And then you've got your anonymous, um, which is a hundred dollars for a hundred thousand dollars, a hundred thousand people per web page views per month. Um, and then your internal users are able to access through your power apps per app or per user plan, which is actually a new, um, a new licensing option. And you can see the link there below this, this, this kind of information is brand, brand new. Um, just came out in the last month. Um, and there's, I can't, there's some stuff I can't speak to, but basically a lot of it ends up coming down to, are you using premium connectors? Are you not using premium connectors? And I really can't speak to any details there, but um, as you're building stuff out, just, I think that's one of the considerations is looking at what, what it is with your flow and your, your power apps. And we'll talk more about licensing in a minute. Uh, what about the client? Now, Basically, there is no like like I was kind of mentioned before that think don't think desktop app, think web client, or if you're looking for a client filling tool these days, it's it's more about what you can do on a tablet or a mobile device uh, where you actually can have an app that's almost like a browser based app, but with the CDS, you can have offline capabilities. So. A couple of comments on this slide. The first one on the right basically speaks to the desktop app is deprecated June 1st, 2018. So don't don't be expecting that desktop app to come come back. Um, and their statement really was the Web Studio surpassed um, the desktop performance and features. Um, and the idea as well is it's hey, it's always up to date, works on a Mac, works on a PC, um, doesn't matter whether you're at home or at work, you can use the Web App Studio and you'll have the latest builds. And uh, I think that this all kind of goes together with the client is this idea of the offline. So in InfoPath, we have this offline client filler, uh, or you can actually use the InfoPath client to actually fill out forms, and sometimes you'd actually build apps that way. Now the idea is um, Power Apps does have some offline capabilities, but I would say that they're different. Um, they, there's some CDS, which is that common data service offline app capabilities. So when you're building solutions on your CDS, um, basically you can leverage um, the load data and save data where you're actually saving it on the device until it connects. Um, and here's kind of an example of like, like say you had kind of a spotty connection and you're trying to fill out a form, you can be updating your data and uh, this timer is checking the internet connection every 30 seconds and saving it um, until it's available. So 
it does have this idea of a database or a local cache um, that it can be uh, that it, that it can it can essentially handle that. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, I think that should be helpful for those of you who are kind of been looking for either spotty connections or low bandwidth connections where you maybe you have a driver who's taking photos of a delivery and then when he gets back he can um, synchronize it that kind of thing. You can build those kind of mobile apps with Power Apps now. Now, <clears throat> before we get into licensing, I did want to just summarize and make sure everybody's understood what I said. Um, and kind of just this is the summary slide here. Basically, from a print ready perspective, there's a little bit of DIY where it's like, hey, if you want to output to email and use your email client to print, that's fine. Um, you can use SSRS or reporting services. Like if you push your, your push your data with Power Apps, push that data into SQL. You can use reporting services. If you want to um, use Power BI, that's an investment area of Microsoft. Um, so Power BI definitely is one of the ways you, they're, they're thinking about it, um, and uh, definitely can anticipate more coming on the roadmap. From an XML perspective, export to PDF or XLS, or you can parse that data that you've got now and use Flow as kind of a go-between um, with the existing data. Um, from a UI perspective, it really is all about the Web Studio. Um, there's the portals, which give you quite a bit, a bit of um, UI capability. There's the Canvas app as well, that basically you can start from a blank slate. Um, and there's a lot more capability than there, there was a year ago. A ton more uh, capability in terms of customizing and making it look good. It's still not going to give you a bunch of JavaScript injection, but your ability to have a really nice um, UI and build out a really cool experience. There's a bunch of templates there. I highly recommend checking those out. Um, on the anonymous side and external access, we've got the portals. So that it's in preview, and there are special licensing available for your external users and how to be able to do that. Um, there's a per app or a per user license. We'll talk more about licensing in a minute. Um, on the client perspective, you've got basically if you're looking for a client, whether it's for offline or rich editing. Um, Basically, the mobile app is the, the way to get get kind of some of your offline capabilities. Uh, Canvas, you can build it actually into your app. So there with with um, with some of those calls, essentially being able to save it onto the device. Um, and uh, so and that's kind of that, that full story with offline and the, the rich client editing um, the night dynamics app or the Power App both have um, some of those capabilities built right into them to, to, to make that easier. Now, some people are gonna say, well, what do I get with my Office 365 E3 license or with the, the license that I bought? Um, that your offline capabilities is something you get with your, your Office 365 license. Um, you can run a number of flows, like 2000 flows, um, per user per month. Um, it doesn't give you access to the premium connectors or the on-premises gateway. Um, it also doesn't allow you to use the data, common data service. So you you get the um, the model model um, uh, essentially capabilities, um, and you can run your Canvas apps in the context of Office 365. Um, and it's your ability to create, run, and share apps, you do have as well. Um, if you start looking at uh, plan one and plan two, where you actually get a lot more capabilities, uh, you can look at this licensing. Um, there really are quite a bit of differences between the two, especially um, from, from, a, from a capability perspective. Um, in fact, there's some your ability to say like, hey, I want to build this app, but I don't know how the enterprise is going to consume it. Um, if you if you end up building some of those premium capabilities into it, there is this ability to say, hey, I built an app, and these are the users that are going to be using it. There's only a handful of them. I don't need to have to license everybody in the organization. You can have a per app plan. 
uh, which is like the $10 per user per app per month. Um, or there's the per, per user plan where you can basically take a number of users and say, this set of users, these premium executives or whatever, they have um, all you can eat, essentially P1 and P2 at the $40 per user per month. Um, or it takes, takes, takes the place of the P1, P2. So that, that, that per user plan. Um, flow itself has its own story and I don't want to have to dig too deep into this but basically there's also a flow plan one and plan two the thing to understand is it's basically it comes down to are we using Salesforce or Oracle these kind of premium connectors do you need to act, use the uh, the gateway to get at, at your on-premises data so a lot of this is basically digging in and trying to understand well what is it you're trying to accomplish um, how many flows from a flow perspective? And even with Power Apps these days, I would say basically try and understand where is the data that you're trying to work with? Because a lot of the licensing um, relates to premium connectors versus standard connectors. Um, now with all that, um, I want to open up another poll, which is okay. where are you? with your InfoPath migration replacement. Say, Joel, it would, before we do the poll, there are some questions coming yeah. up that I think are worth Great. addressing. There, people are asking some really good questions. And one topic that comes up a lot is about on-premises. If you're on SharePoint 2019 even, or 2013, 2016. Yeah. There, you know, I've been a, a, trying to address that question as I go along. Pray, so you have to set up a data gateway and you have to have some kind yep. of account in Office 365 or, a power app or flow plan that you know, obviously cost licensing there's a license cost to both of those Correct. Yeah. so you know if you go if you you have to ask the question do you have to use power apps on premises or why not just use a tool that already is all set up without any need for an office 365 and of course being with crow canyon i'm gonna promote nitro studio but there are a number of <laughs> for, well, of course, right. a number of forms and workflow tools that run entirely within the on-premises world. Why would you need to go to Power Apps and uh, Flow uh, plans? Yeah, and, and, I, data and I think that is an interesting one where it's like people are used to using SharePoint Design and InfoPath. So now you upgrade to 2019 and Microsoft saying, hey, don't don't use InfoPath and uh, Designer. You really need to start using Power Apps and Flow. Um, but absolutely, those are cloud apps. And the way to access those is by using the, the gateway. Um, and the, the data gateways, and uh, it does require special licensing to be able to, to take advantage of that. Right, um, there's a, I think the premium comes with the data gateway, so therefore you would need, yeah. uh, you know, not just yeah, what you get would. out of Office 365, but if you're on premises, you probably don't have Office 365 to begin with, so uh, you would need yeah, to get and, a power and it, You may or may not, clients. I think yeah, that's the interesting not. thing. Sure. Right, right, it's like some customers, it may be that there's, this premium farm where it's like, hey, this is our data, this data doesn't go, but maybe you've got OneDrive or maybe you've got Exchange already up in the cloud. You know, some companies are kind of tipping their, stepping their, putting their toe in the water and, and starting with Exchange and OneDrive and uh, some of their portals or their intranet may still be on-prem. Um, and maybe that's where they're now looking to go to 2019 or take advantage of these data gateways where some of the data is on-prem. On um, and with the per app and per user, now they have the ability to say, and it's only this department or only the set of users. So there are now some ways of being able to kind of slice and dice it a little bit more. Um, okay. Uh, one, one question was, did you say that Power Apps can now be used by external users? So, with the portal capability. So when you're creating, if we go back to the studio, in studio you can create a portal. Portals are in preview, and portals have this ability to be shared with external users. They've got their own licensing, essentially. Um, that, not not exclusive licensing, but basically Power Apps license that's related to um, the portal. And I could, I could jump back um, to help you understand what I'm talking about in relation to the portal. Yeah, so these portals, um, you have external users that are authenticated, 
um, $200 for 100 logins a month, or external users anonymous, which is $100 for 100,000 page views a month. So there is licensing for external users um, with these Power App portals. Okay, so that's, you know, it's available, but there's a licensing cost. Um, yes. One one other thing is about another question, several one. One person wants to answer a question, ask a question verbally, and maybe we'll open it up for him. But for now, there's another question here about uh, easy print option for the forms. I think you covered that in the sense that there really isn't out of Power Apps, that there's various scenarios you can do with uh, SSRS and PDF and, you know, that whole section you did on printing from Power Apps, right? There's no, it isn't like yeah. just button printing. Capability. Right, you can print from the browser, but that's not a lot of what people are looking for. They really want this kind of professional look, right? Um, and that's where, yeah, you can export to PDF or export to Excel or you know export to, to or connect it to your Power BI reports, and then and then you print print your Power BI reports from from Power BI. Um, okay, yeah. So, so that really depends on the webinar, and and there's yeah. There's a, Information. All right, and um, another one uh, has been asked twice here about for offline capabilities. Do we need CDS, you know, Common Data Service, for offline so capabilities? The, so if you're building it, the CDS does have some capabilities in it. Um, but if you're if you can get your users using um, like if it's Dynamics data, they can use the Dynamics. Um, mobile app um, and then and then as well when you're actually building your your app um, basically what you're looking for is the load data save data capabilities um, and there is a link here um, where, in fact if, if I open this right up so you can actually see these offline capabilities like I am kind of mentioning the mobile app um, the um there's an article here and this this deck so you can see all these links that are in here you'll you'll have all these so like um uh, go ahead and grab the deck and then you can actually dig further in on implementing offline capabilities into your app um, okay that's that's from one of our customers so we can uh maybe work with her directly to get answers you know uh, sure. diana, diana you can contact us and we'll try and get you more answers if that wasn't enough from Joel there uh, it's okay now one other thing is uh, where is it want to hear this normally we don't open it up for questions to the uh, public but this person wants to ask a question would that be okay there uh, Joel yeah I'm okay. I'm okay sure all right Dale Dale I think the name Dale you can go ahead I think you're able to unmute you do you want to ask your question you there Dale Dale was muted too can you hear me now yes yeah yeah okay great uh just uh one, one verification and one quick question um i i used uh power uh apps for canvas and model apps and i, I gotta say for infopath you know usually it was a you know well it was always a web page so it just kind of you know wasn't the prettiest thing but it worked pretty well on a you know displaying on a, on a the typical scenario in most corporations you know, mobile's nice. Some people have tablets, some people have mobile devices, but most people use their laptops. Things are just too complicated, right? They're not, you know, you know, most people aren't delivery drivers counting Coke bottles or something. You know, I mean, it's it's more targeted toward, um, you know, uh, using a web uh, web page. Anyway, um, so I just want to verify. I, I found the um, Canvas apps were even though they're supposed to be p pixel perfect. Were very difficult to make a nice looking web page out of by default, and uh, the model apps, um, you know, they generated a bunch of controls and made a responsive website, and that was pretty nifty, but locked you down considerably. Um, so my, I, I think maybe the portal apps are going to be yeah, more that's that's what you're making friendly. me think. Yeah, yeah. these portals yeah. are definitely more designed around this idea of the 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 web page, you know, being able to actually have this. Um, not not only is it sharing, but I think it gives you this whole surface where you can then drag stuff onto it and pull in your data and you know right. pull in your charts and graphs and stuff. Okay, because I always thought it was weird. I know they're using dynamics technology, but uh, you know if you used the uh, the regular Canvas app, which is targeted at tablets and and phones, 
you, you can't even really it's very difficult to make it a responsive web page. I mean, like as in response, right. re auto resizing. Yeah, it was pixel perfect, which meant it looked okay on mobile and pretty bad. <laughs> giant boxes, <laughs> giant text, you know, and then again, right, the mobile right. app would generate this nifty, responsive, uh, decent look and interface, but tweaking that was very difficult to make it anything other than what was seemingly out of the box. There didn't seem to be any extra controls you could get or anything. They were kind of nifty with what you got. So I'm hoping that portal, the portals um, stuff in preview can be used to uh, develop some nice web pages for internal folks. So it's not I, like I, I agree. I, I'm very hopeful as well that the portals are actually the thing we've been looking for. Okay, perfect. And then one, one quick thing, uh, you know, we work in a corporation here. Uh, there doesn't seem to be much of an application lifecycle management uh, aspect to any of this stuff. Like I'd like to move, you know, simple things like, Hey, let's put it in dev stage and prod, or even even if you don't have separate environments or separate tenants for that, let's secure it away in a certain way. Is there any way to move, you know, an app from dev to stage to prod, and then have maybe so, somebody else sign off on it? You know, very yeah, basic um, 101 stuff that so many corporations, whether they're finance or hospital or, or just good practice, you know, you shouldn't right. always work in production. <laughs> you know. So is there anything, anything around, and you don't have to necessarily put it to Git or, um, or TFS, you know, old TFS, um, but I'm just wondering, is there anything like, you know, I, it seems you can export pa things into a package with model apps to some degree, but yeah. you know, wholesale have just this giant, I guess it's a giant XML file of some sort. Yeah, so it's like you see here in the UI where you can import a package, yeah. that's in preview as well. So you are you are going to see more of that ability to import and export and share and and so on. Yeah. Okay. And is that just for? I can't remember. I think that's just for model apps, or does that include Canvas apps as well? Um, let's just say that that's that's an investment area. So I, okay. I can't I can't tell you exactly where they're at with it. Um, but it's it, that ability that you're asking for is something that is an investment area. And then, of course, uh, one more just anecdotal, you know, then you got your CDS and you got your, you know, all the, how do you, you know, usually you have a config file of some sort of development or, you know, an app config or something like that for you. Hey, this is just this little difference here and there. Hopefully this packaging has some, you know, ability to, point, hey, now you're pointing to the dev CDS. Now you're pointing, you know, that type of thing. So, okay. So you're verified right. again. There's very little application lifecycle management. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, I, maybe I, something's I would coming. Say that's, a maturity. that's definitely a maturity thing. So I'd say those are the kinds of things that they're, the whole life cycle uh, is, is, and I'm I'm not someone to speak to where they're at or, you know, I'm not somebody on the product team who can talk about the roadmap. Um, and I guess so I have to basically say it's an investment area and I can't, yeah, you know. Yeah, there's, there's a blog and there's a user voice. Uh, environments yep. that you can post inform you know uh, what we call feedback or comments on right yeah, absolutely that. Uh, and one more thing I hope this new licensing helps out but boy you you should just want to uh, you know design a solution and then you got to think well wait a minute uh, I'm gonna have to get you're, you're halfway through and it, oh wait a minute I got to get a hundred t2 licenses because I'm using an Oracle data source and I didn't think I needed to so that's hopefully this new licensing will help with that but it's it's a strange thing to like, you know, have to worry about forty dollars per user per month, maybe if you pick a, a, a feature. <laughs> you know? yeah, right. There are yeah. questions. You'll see a new licensing coming out or a revised license in this fall, I believe. But uh, we're really not. It's not something we can really address due to NDAs and. Oh yeah, I'm not asking for the answer. I'm just throwing it out there. It makes it challenging. To yeah, uh, yeah. I think the license right. very challenging. Well, P1, let's get some. Yeah, let's anyway, get I get off. This I'm poll. taking too much time. Yeah, yeah no, that's fine. We'll, we'll, let's see if we get this poll before. Uh, we want to still launch the poll there, Joel? Yeah, go for it. All right. Thanks, Dale, for your questions. Yeah, sure. Thanks for letting me ask. No problem. There we go. Poll is open. And this really is where are you where are you at um, or where are you with your InfoPath migration replacement? And I, I would expect a lot of the people here on this call are in various stages. 
And you want to speak to some of those options, Scott? Sorry. What I've found in most uh, all the polls I've done in webinars and talking to people at the shows, in fact, we were just in Seattle last week at the SharePoint Fest, and you know, a lot of one-on-one -on -one engagements with people talking about InfoPath and all the other various people involved with the MVPs and the Power Apps people and you know all the players. Anyway, what I'm seeing in the results is very, very consistent. Is that most people, the vast majority, well, the large majority is in the preliminary information gathering stage. Not so many people have jumped in the pool yet. Most people just dip in their toes, seeing, hey, I know I got to do this. I know I got to move off InfoPath. There's new features out there, new capabilities inside of uh, of Power Apps and, and also Office 365 or tools like our Nitro Studio and other other workflow automation tools are really advancing forward and leaving InfoPath in the dust. As you've said numerous times, Joel, they stopped development on it, I think, 10 years ago, at least six or seven years ago on InfoPath. So, Technology yeah, more more than, more than ten actually. More it was 10, it was yeah. yeah. So it's sorely outdated and not adapted at all for mobile and the cloud first kind of environment that we we're we're moving forward there hopefully in already. So but so people are you know they're not not only sixteen percent of the whole poll here have started and have converted some forms. You know three percent are well along in the process. So that wow. is uh, that's that shows you right Very there. Very telling. Seventy yeah. percent. Almost 70, oh, somebody wanted me to, to close the poll and show the results. So I'll be glad to do that, share, right? There you are. So, you know, I'm not making those numbers up. They're right there in this uh, this call, and they're very consistent with what I've seen in other other places. So I do see a little more on started, Joel, than I have previously, you know? I mean, funny as it's only 16%, but that is, a there may be a move starting, you know, down that. And from, I, I would love to hear from people as well, like, was this, did this resonate? Did this did this webinar help you see it in a new light? You know, is are you after the data I've shared today? Is that is that something you're now going to go you know look at in a different way? Um, it'd be great to, to to get some feedback as well from people on. If you want to just even add, add that into the comments, I'd I'd love to know if this if this resonated and helped you get get unparalyzed. <laughs> Well, yeah, that's that's that would come in the comments, and there's an awful lot of uh, uh, questions that we won't have time to answer here. But we do want to make a little plug on Crow Canyon software here. Is that what we have been doing over the past couple of years is looking at the InfoPath replacement uh, conundrum and seeing what can be done to to help. And we realize, and we have a number of partners that we work with work with that can analyze the current environment of your InfoPath see what forms you have, and it's not as simple as just pushing a button and going from, hey, I'm in InfoPath, now I want to go to something else, whether it's Power Apps or some other tool, you know, there's a number of ones out there, Nintex, K2, there's our Nitro Studio, things like that that can solve the forms workflow uh, issue and the process automation solutions are out there. Nobody has a push a button, push a button and get it done thing because the technologies are very different that InfoPath uses and all that, but there is a migration strategy that we methodology that we've been developing in conjunction with our partners that we've had these discussions involving and analyzing what you have in place already getting uh, certain as to what forms you have or what InfoPath workflows or InfoPath investment you have already and then seeing how that can be converted now it isn't you always want to take junk from one and junk to the other because there may be a number of InfoPath tools that are outdated or uh, inappropriate or need revision or updating or whatever so it has to be an analytical analysis part of it that says would well, we really need to move this over if we do move it over what needs to be changed who's using it look at usage stats and say well it's great form but no one's using it i mean all kinds of information like that being set up a plan that will move over to a, a new environment, the, the Office 365 Power Apps, or if you're on-premises, you might want to move to an on-premise solution um, in, in that regard. And part of that is, you know, we have this Nitro Studio, which, which does that. And I was just talking to Joel before the webinar and saying, you know, Nitro Studio is a form and workflow solution. You could take it right now, start building forms and workflows, you know, as much as you want. But the point is that if you're talking about InfoPath replacement and migration, you're going to have to look at what you have, see what needs to be moved. And we're, you know, Crow Canyon's very invested in that. We've done a number of projects. We have a number of customers we're working with, and some have small number of forms, some have large numbers. And, 
seeing what can, it takes, really, it's a, it's a work in progress, to be honest with you, to see what it takes to go from one to the other, and everybody's different in what they have and how they want to move and when they want to move and what the social and organizational issues are involved in movement, because a lot of user adaption, user adoption, I mean, and user user impact when you move from one type of form to another. So it's a bigger project than just getting, oh, I'm going to just get this tool and it's going to be done. I'm just going to learn Power Apps and it's going to be done. I'm just going to use Nitro Studio and it's going to be done. Those certainly are tools that are useful and will play a big part in info path replacement or migration, but it's also that strategic approach of saying, what do we need to do to get from point A to point B? And there's a number of partners we're working with. There's a number of things we're doing. You can migrate data, for example, and have all the data dumped from InfoPath into a SharePoint list, and then you still have to build forms and workflows that use that data, but at least you have the data there. There's, there's technologies that we're working on that will move forms over, uh, but it's, you know, it's, it's nascent. It's beginnings. It depends what you have in your forms and how complex they are. It's not as easy as a simple, like I say, push a button. So a number of things going on there. Now, if you look at... Um, yeah, we have a number of infographics. Uh, here's one that Joel's showing about seven reasons why Nitro Studio InfoPath replacement tool, because we're pushing that along. We want to keep, we want to, one reason we sponsor this webinar and have these um, calls and uh, efforts is that we want to encourage people to take the steps and go from that very preliminary stage into moving it along. And as Joel said at the beginning, not wait to the last minute and then scramble to get you know, uh, ahead of the InfoPath cutoff date, expiration date, and, and or move into a new version of SharePoint or Office 365, move to Office 365 and find yourself kind of stuck with this, uh, you know, weight, the sinking ship of InfoPath. So we have a number of things there you can look at. We have a whole guide to InfoPath replacement on our website. We've done a number of webinars. We have a set of resources available. So we're really glad to sponsor this and work in hand-to-hand -hand with Joel and what he's doing and help you move from the uh, current, you know, get off the very preliminary stage or just started stage into, you know, an aggressive uh, forward moving move from InfoPath and to, to uh, you know, the, the newer solution. I and mean, hopefully it's Nitro Studio, but if not, we can help you, you know, in whatever migration you're doing to whatever solution you have there of the forms and workflows. And, you know, the brave new world, the big shining ship coming to rescue you from InfoPath sinking. <laughs> Quite a fun graphic right there, isn't it, that he's showing on his website. So, uh, also, oh, this is another thing. We have another webinar. Joel, can you go to that webinar about coming up on this Thursday? Uh, yeah, we go through all this, but there's a web this one right here, August 29th. That's this Thursday with James. Same time, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. You can sign right up at croquet.com webinars and take a good look at the Nitro Studio Forms Designer. And we'll cover some of the capabilities of that tool, and uh, see you know if that's got a play in your in your uh, in your plans here. And I think this fall, I'm getting encouraged now. Joel, maybe Joel, you and I will do another webinar, or I'll do one specifically on info path replacement techniques and strategy. That might be a good one to do. I've done that before a couple times, uh, but it'll be good to do again. Refresh it with new ideas and the new information from Microsoft that's coming out as we can reveal that. Right? When you say. That'd be good. Set that up maybe for October. So, anyway, if anybody can get in touch with us one on one and uh, talk to us about you know Crow Canyon or Joel about what is what is possible and what is the way forward and a number of good questions. You will try and answer them afterwards and through a blog and go from there. But thank you very much for attending. We're going a little bit over the hour, so here's some information. Uh, it's more than we can cover in one hour, right, Joel? <laughs> There's so much here. Yeah, yeah, it, it's tough. It's like I'm sure there were people who would love for me to spend some time just diving in and building apps and showing, you know, what it would be like taking an info path form and rebuilding it with Power Apps or, you know, building some flows and things like that. It's like I'd love to do that, but it, you know, it, it's tough to do that with the time we have and really be able to cover the information we do. But right, definitely, right. thanks everybody for joining. Okay, yeah, and we'll have a recording and uh, send out slide deck and link to anybody who attended. And, uh, oh, you know, again, like there's that webinar coming up next, I mean, this Thursday. And otherwise, we'll communicate, stay in touch by email or phone or whatever. Thank you again. Thank you very much, Joel, for your excellent information, too. Yeah, and let me just let me just say, any questions as well as the polls, I'll be doing a follow-up blog post to post the information and kind of speak to 
um, kind of where people really are at. It's, it's, it's really still interesting to understand how many people are actually kind of stuck here and we want to help them. Um, in fact, reach, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. We can connect. Uh, there's my blog, tra- collabshow.com. There's my travel blog, travelingepics.com. <laughs> um, but definitely love to connect, uh, love the community. Love to hear from you as to whether this is uh, valuable for you and help you understand what's going on in your world.